Today I would like to introduce the so-called right column problem and I will introduce this problem with reference to an elastic double pendulum, two rigid elements connected through elastic hinges. Please notice that there is also this rigid element horizontal. The way we have realized this simple structure is this. We have these two rigid elements, we have also the horizontal bar and these elements are connected through these flexible uh, parts which realize the elastic hinges. Now, what is the problem here? The problem is how the vertical load is given, is applied to the structure, because this vertical load has to remain along this vertical line. This is a sketch of a deformed structure and we see that the load has remained vertically. It can freely move along this bar but has to remain on the same vertical. This kind of load is non-conservative and can induce flatter instability in these kinds of elastic structures. What is the problem? The problem is how to realize this non-conservative load. Because until now, for many, many years, this problem is 60 years old. For many, many years, uh, people did not know how to realize this load and was considered almost impossible. Now we can think, why not to realize this load with a weight uh, moving along a guide, a vertical line? Well, this would not be such kind of load because that would be conservative. And in fact, if we sketch that problem here, we see this is the weight, we see that if the contact is smooth with this element, then the reaction force would be orthogonal to it. So it would be a different load from that I have shown before. Now, what is the key to solve this problem? The key to solve this problem is to exploit Coulomb friction. And particularly, we should exploit the contact with friction of a freely rotating cylinder. So, this is the freely rotating cylinder. It can freely rotate about its, its axis. And imagine this is this rigid element. When this element touches the cylinder and the cylinder slides with friction against it, it can only transmit a frictional force aligned with the axis of the tube. Otherwise, the cylinder would sli simply rotate without transmitting any force. Now, this is the way to realize the Reut's force that is sketched here and remains on this line. This line becomes the axis of the cylinder. Now, this is the idea. We have to move in the lab to see a serious experiment and we will see that the serious experiment will show for this simple structure flatter instability and, for higher load, diverges instability. And these instabilities will be induced by the correct application of the right load. This is the experimental setup. We see here the elastic double pendulum, which is receiving the right force from the freely rotating cylinder here. So, during an experiment, the cylinder is moved against the double pendulum and the vertical load here is changed. So, for small vertical load, the frictional force will be also small and the structure will be stable. I will move the cylinder by hand now and we see that small load, the structure is stable. Now, if I change the vertical load and I put this weight on it, now the frictional force of contact between cylinder and structure will be higher and now we are in the flatter regime. So I will move again by hand and we will see the flatter instability. This is flatter instability. While during a real test, the movement to the cylinder is transmitted by a machine which is on the right here, is not visible, and gives a constant velocity to the cylinder. And the vertical load is not given just adding weights, but is given through a pulley system, so we will not see any load here.